Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now today being May the 4th, well you kinda have to, don't you? It's time for some Star Wars. And today we're gonna tackle Han Solo. Now this fella here, he is a 3D print, but the same principles are gonna apply whichever miniature it is that you're painting. And I will include in the description a couple of notes on colors if you wanna swap around for things like his trousers or include the coat that comes on the miniature in the Star Wars Legion sets. So we'll keep this nice and brief. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the recipe for the base in the description too. So take a peek down there, follow along. Let's get started. Now, very briefly, this fella is a 3D print. He's come from Skullforge Studios, which I will link to in the description. And I printed him on a Mars 2 Pro. Now, the reason why I bring this up is I think, based on the number of pockets on his vest and why a, a vest would have pockets on the back, I don't know, but this, horizontal one in the center of his jacket, I'm pretty sure only appeared in A New Hope. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, I've spent most of the morning looking at Han Solo's bloody clothing, so I, I've gone a bit blind to it to be honest. But we're going to paint him up for Endor, because well, that's what most folks are going to be using him for, I would say. I will include one or two different paint suggestions in the description though, so if you do want to paint the Death Star version, as it were, then you can do that instead. But first off, we're going to start with some Cadian Flesh Tone and apply this over, well, his skin. You'll see this covers very well over our light grey primer. Uh, you could use Grey Sear instead here, if that's a little easier for you to get your hands on. And I'm going to be sticking today mostly to Citadel stuff because it is easy for most folks to get at the moment. I know one or two people have mentioned that they're finding it a little difficult to get uh, Vallejo products in their, in their stores. Uh, so Citadel today. You might find this needs a couple of coats to get a solid color, and that is gonna be important. And you'll see here as well, this fella's got gloves on. So let's just paint his wrists, and I'm not worried if I do hit his uh, hands or his shirt. So two coats later, we're going to move on to his shirt. For this, I'm using Screaming Skull. Now this is a very light beige, but I think it's going to quite closely fit what he's wearing in Return of the Jedi. Likewise, don't worry too much if we do hit his vest here. Uh, just take your time when you come near his skin. Now two coats of that later, I want to briefly touch on the subject of thinning your paints, because this is a part of genuinely good advice, which I think has been memed into oblivion to the point it doesn't mean anything useful to folks anymore. When you're getting the advice to thin your paints, all you want is for that paint to flow smoothly off the brush. And when people suggest things like thin it to a milky consistency, that's not universal advice. Uh, to be quite honest, I, I find that's generally not very useful at all. All you want is flow. If you're still getting a little bit in the way of visible brush strokes on your miniature while you're painting, let it dry because sometimes you'll find, particularly with Citadel and Vallejo paints, as they settle and dry, those brush strokes will even out. But as far as thin everything down to milky consistency, nah, get a little bit of paint on your palette, whether it's a wet palette or whatever, just a tiny wee dot of water at a time and add it until you can paint confidently. I would suggest to you that more often than not, it is going to be better to have paint that is too thick than is too thin. Because if it's too thick, it's not going to come off your brush and flood all of the work that you've just done and be much easier to control. But you do want paint to flow. So yeah, it's a balancing act. And unfortunately, there isn't really a piece of universal advice for how much water should I add? Short answer is a tiny bit at a time until you get the result you want. Don't overthin your paints. Now on that note, we are gonna pick another color which is generally considered a little difficult to paint, and that's gonna be the yellow stripe on his trousers. For this, I am venturing outside of Citadel. I'm gonna use here Moon Dust from the Army Painter. And this has got just a wee touch of water in it, maybe a little bit too much on my brush there, but you'll see that this covers really nicely, and it doesn't matter too much if I get a little bit of splash over onto his trousers. You see, I've been playing with it there as well. Uh, this is a little bit darker and slightly more rich and saturated than something like Dawn Yellow and lighter and 
not as lurid, I would say, as something like Flesh Gets Yellow. So once we've shaded this, I think this is going to look better on the trousers. You'll see I haven't really given much care for the rest of the trousers. As long as the stripe is accurate, this next part is going to be simple. So I have here some Thondia Brown, and this is one where I'm not 100% certain it's actually the right color. Um, I might start from Steel Legion Drab ordinarily, because the trousers, depending on whether you're watching the film or looking at the 1-6 scale toys or what have you, everybody seems to approach the color of the trousers from a slightly different direction. But Thondia Brown is nice, and it does look quite accurate. So you see it's easy to straighten out the stripe. Just paint down alongside it. Now it will take two coats to get a nice solid colour, but Thondia Brown is a really pleasant chocolatey brown. It's a nice colour. Coincidentally, it is almost exactly the same colour as Vallejo's Chocolate Brown, so if you can get your hands on it, go check that one out too. And on that subject, I am going to use here Black Grey from Vallejo, because you could use Corvus Black here instead, but I think you'll see with coverage, oh, this is what we want. Now this goes on looking a little lighter than it will as it dries. So it's black grey, and as it dries, it's almost black. So it's just perfect for clothing. So let's go around, and I'm going to apply a single coat of this to his vest. As well as the vest, I've also painted in his boots with that black grey. And this is one of those little differences I like between my Imperials and my Rebels. My Imperial miniatures, I'd use a true black. But I think the black grey on Rebels makes them just, it's a tiny wee visual difference, which I think adds up across a force. So up to you whether or not you want to use a true black later, because I'm going to use that on his blaster. Uh, but yeah, that's why I've done that. Now I'm going to turn to Mournfang Brown, and this is going to be our leather colour. Now I'm going to use the same medium brush that I've been using for most of this. Uh, but when it comes to some of the smaller straps, I am going to move down to a smaller brush. You'll see one or two gaps where I've left parts that are going to be buckles, you know, silver later, but that's just fine. It's a real nice color. Now let's have a proper argument. What color is Harrison Ford's hair? <laughs> I did. Sorry, I've been trying to say this three or four times. I crack up every time. I reckon it depends on how floofy his hair is in any particular shot. He's got quite light brown hair, and I reckon when the, uh, the light catches it just right, it looks even lighter. But... I'm going to apply Steel Legion Drab as the base coat for this. This goes on quite light, but as with most of them, you'll find that it will darken down a little, and we are going to shade it. But then we're going to, <laughs> we're going to highlight it later so it looks more floofy. <laughs> and once you've decided on the floofiness of your Han Solo hair, I have a little Iron Hand Steel that I'm going to use to paint in the silver details on his belt. And finally, a little bit of black. I'm using the Vallejo here, but Abaddon Black is black. It's it's just black. Coverage is what I'm looking for here, though. Now at this stage, if you need to go back and do any tidy up, so maybe a yellow or a little bit of skin, you can go ahead and do that now. But what I've done is got that all out of the way, and I have here a couple of shades. I'm going to start with Reichland Flesh Shade, and we're not going to apply very much of this. So my medium layer brush here, I'm going to start from the left hand side of his face and just paint this into all of the crevices of his skin. And you see very quickly we get a nice shading effect. And what I'm going to do next is apply some Agrax Earthshade over the shirt, but it's going to be way too dark if I use it neat from the pot, so I do want to thin it down. Now I saw a suggestion the other day where somebody said use contrast medium instead of a Lamian medium, to thin your shades and see what you get. So this isn't ordinarily what I would do, so if it goes funny, you'll know why, but let's experiment. So I'm going to put a couple of big brushfuls of contrast medium onto my palette there, and then I'm going to add about the same, maybe a little more Agrax Earthshade, to the side. That looks about equal there. All right, now mix those together. I'm going to load up my medium layer brush again, and let's apply this. Let's see what we get over the shirt in the front here. Oh! Okay, so it's not super pronounced, and that flows quite nicely. Good suggestion. Okay. 
I might try that on some other things in the future too. So let's apply this to his whole shirt and see what that looks like in a couple of seconds. And with that dried, I'm actually really surprised how well that went on. Similarly to applying contrast, you do want to be quite careful and work in a section at a time so you avoid any sort of tide marks, but that's dried pretty much perfectly. Uh, that's run into the recesses just where I wanted. I've also used the same mix on his hair, and yeah, no, I'm really keen on that, that's quite cool. But I do want to use Agrax Earthshade again, and this time we're going to use it neat from the pot, because I'm going to apply it over his trousers, the leather, and we might as well pop it on his boots as well. Don't need to go nuts with this, so I will shift some of that away. But away we go, doing this in the old country fashion. And then finally on the shade front, we're going to apply some Non Oil. Now I have used the Agrax Earthshade on his boots, because I want them to have a slightly brown finish, but up on his vest here I'm going to use Non Oil instead. Now it's up to you, you could use the Agrax Earthshade here as well, but I want just a little bit of difference between those two areas of material. Now once at last all of our shades are dry, you've got a harm that you can put on the table. He's looking pretty cool. But of course, let's take it a little further with one or two really simple highlights. Now I'm starting off here, I have Wraithbone, and this is a base paint, but if you thin it down a little bit more than ordinary and let it flow like a layer paint, well, it works just fine for some highlights. So I'm going to be quite sparing with this, I don't want to go crazy and change up the color of the, uh, the shirt, but just along some of the more pronounced folds, let's get a little bit of Wraithbone in there to accentuate those. Now on camera that is a little more subtle than it appears in reality. If you do want a sharper highlight though, you know, you try this yourself, doesn't look quite bright enough for you, swap to Pallid Witch Flesh and that'll do the job. To highlight his vest I have here some Storm Vermin Fur, this is a neat slightly faded grey colour, and we're just going to do a few little bits on the edges of the pockets and on the creases of some of the folds. This is very much a case of as much of this as you like looks good. Um, I tend to think being fairly sparing with it is going to give you a better result, but uh, if you want a more pronounced kind of comic book look, then go a little crazy with it if you fancy. Anywhere where you, you know, maybe you go overboard, you can go back to your black grey and use that to tidy up if you need to. I said I wasn't going to do very much of that, and then I started applying it and discovered, now oh, that looks cooler with a little bit more than I would have thought. So, you know, a plan never survives contact with the enemy, as they say, and in this case, the enemy is unpainted resin. I'm going to move on to Scrag Brown, and with this I'm going to highlight the leather details. If you wanted a more pronounced highlight, then Deathclaw Brown might be where to go to. Now let's just bop a little bit of this onto the edges of the belt and any of the little dealy boppers on it. You know what, just so you can see how it will look if you do choose to go ahead, here's a little bit of death claw brown right in the corners of these leather bits. Now part of the reason why I do want that leather to look quite separate to the trousers, being a little bit brighter and more vibrant, is because we're going to go back to Mournfang Brown in order to highlight the trousers. So in this instance I want to be a little more sparing, but some of the creases and the extreme folds, just a little bit of thinned out Mournfang Brown to accentuate those. You'll tend to find the shade has done a pretty good job of making the trousers look a little more interesting though, so if you want to skip this highlight stage, here's one I think you can get away with not doing. Now we're getting somewhere. We're almost finished. What's really left to do is his face and his hair. So I quite enjoy painting faces. I'm going to go back to Cadian Flesh Tone again, and what I'm going to do is paint this over most of his skin, while leaving just some of that shaded stuff in the recesses. So particularly up on his face here, his cheekbones and what have you, you can use this to start sketching in some of the shape of his face again. Now we've left some of that deeper shading in the recesses, but Han doesn't look quite so red anymore, and that's really ideal. We'll move on now, and I have some Kislev Flesh, 
and this is where we're going to start basically contouring his face. Now I thoroughly suggest if you struggle with painting faces, it's something that you don't like doing, or maybe you just, you know, you're not confident in your skills, watch makeup tutorials. It sounds crazy, but contouring will help you get an idea of what parts of a face you're trying to accentuate. So I'm going to apply some Kis hey, Kislev flesh rather across his cheekbones, his chin and what have you, and basically accentuate those parts of his face. Now here you'll see what I mean by contouring. I've painted in most of his cheek, most of his jawline, his top lip and such, with a little bit of that Kislev flesh. And we've got now contouring. We've essentially added to the shape that the sculptor has given us. It looks a little better from this side because it's easier to <laughs> reach that side. Now we are going to apply a final highlight to his face. And for this I am using Flayed One Flesh. In this case, I really want to just concentrate on the tip of his nose, his chin, and maybe his top lip. And there's our man. What I'm going to do now is use a little bit of Bane Blade Brown, and I'm going to use this mostly to highlight his hair, uh, but as well, I'm going to use this highlight color to paint in his eyebrows. Uh, I tend to find that painting the eyebrows in the hair color makes them look super dark and prominent. So instead, just leaving them to last and highlighting them is going to be plenty. Now the very last thing I'm going to do is take one of my ready old brushes and I'm going to lightly dry brush some Necron compound onto his blaster. Just a tiny wee touch of this. If I apply a little too much, I'll just go over it with some non-oil, but I'm confident that's not going to be a problem. Now from here, you could also highlight his boots if you wanted to, but I don't think it's going to add much to our gaming figure. And if you do want to go the route of actually highlighting the, uh, the blood stripe on his trousers, then a little bit of Dawn Yellow will probably be the best choice there. But again, I'm not too fussed about that. So let's go ahead, I'm going to pop a base on him, and the recipe for that one will be in the description. Let's get a look at what our dude looks like when Han is all finished. And there at last, General Solo is complete, ready to take the fight to the Empire, whether they be on Endor, Tatooine, or, well, any of the other planets that we like to repeatedly return to in the Star Wars universe. Now, I had a blast painting this guy. It's really a lot of fun just spending a little bit of extra time on some of your character miniatures. Those named heroes that, at least in my case, I grew up with, it's really cool to be able to put them on the table. So whether you do go the route of 3D printing them or picking them up somewhere from the Star Wars Legion boxes, they are brilliant. The slightly larger scale that Legion operates in gives you a little more real estate when it comes to how you want to paint them. And I think they're a lot of fun. Definitely worth grabbing something if ever you've had the urge. So as always, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the wonderful patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Jimmy, and Rod. Your support means the world, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comment box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, one and all, and may the Force be with you.